What's good, guys? You're on the link up, and of course, today is about to be another fantastic day. I mean, you see me on black and everything, and uh, the artist I'm about to speak with is another interview I've always wanted to have. Um, uh, recently, uh, certain trials slash tribulations, but God will not allow it prevail. You know, we like to stick to the good side of things. Uh, also has a popping popping record at the moment. Um, uh, I think over like 70,000 videos on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, the clubs are going nuts about it. And it's still picking up, honestly, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Scales. Yay. <laughs> How you doing, my G? I'm good, man. My I'm rich right. friend. <laughs> I claim it's in Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm that? good. I'm all right. How you feeling? You know, I'm, I'm feeling good, man. Feeling enjoying life, honestly. Appreciating life every day. I mean, I'm watching your. I don't. I don't know if you're one of the snap people, but mm. I watch your Insta story, and mm. I feel like you don't post that much on yeah. the Insta story of your hanging out activities. <laughs> but even the small way day, plenty. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean. <clears throat> I usually forget because I, I want to enjoy what I'm doing, so I usually yes. forget to record, you know, with my phone and all. But yeah, but hopefully, I think now I'm going to change that that style. I'm going to start recording things I'm yeah. putting up. Okay, okay. Yeah. Look, mm. Connie Badger is already spoiling everywhere. Yeah, uh, see what I did there. Connie Badger means <laughs> it will not spoil. Yeah, it's catching everywhere at the moment, bro. Yeah. Look, man, what did you do to that song? First of all, I got a uh, shout out to the producer, Facts. Jay Pizzo. JP is like he's like a very important person in in my career, you know, history wise mm. till now. No, how long have you guys been working together? Man, for years, man, <laughs> more than a decade. <laughs> what JP Productions? Is yeah, that he produced ah. from Shake Body to. So That's we've been, him? yeah, he's the one. Ooh, yeah. So you know, we've not. The funny thing is, we've not like been talking to each other for like a couple of years. Why? The relation, what some kind of things happened. Like what? So, Huh? Bro, oh, it's just it was just normal misunderstanding, it. people getting in the Costa? way. No, it was Man. not, it was no woman. No, no, it was just business. Money? Just misunderstanding. Yeah, misunderstanding. He nah, he was paid. He didn't just understand things. Like <laughs> what? Well, it's really deep. I can't talk about it, but what? but yeah, it was just the fact that we didn't have like a lot of documents, right? And you know, the other person feels like, oh, he's being cheated. No, not cheated, he's been sidelined and all. Mm. But later on. He, with understanding we're back and even stronger and as a family and as as my producer artist you know relationship is stronger now and I won't lie I miss this production because we just came back if I tell you if I play you tracks Konyu Baje is just a t glimpse uh, what did you call it again tip, tip of, the of the iceberg, iceberg. you get me and big shout out to him so you know he came through I remember I went to the club that day and um I told him, yo, just I told him, just look for inspiration, man, and just make this beat. And I remember coming back from the club and I was tired, man. I was drunk, tired. I was like, bro, I'm going to sleep because we rented an apartment. Yeah. Anytime I want to make music, we rent an apartment to, nice. you know, just chill, have good vibes, let it flow, and work. You get. So, anyways, um, I came back, heard the, uh, and I heard the beat. I just came alive, man. I was like, damn, this is hard, bro. I was like, at that time, it was just the drums and some sound that he had on. I was like, so I just, I was like, okay, you know, let me just record like this idea that I'm having in my head. I started with that. If you hate it, you go rest. Him. And that's where I just, after I like uh, the first eight bars of the song, I just rest my case there and I, I left. <laughs> I went to rest. And um, I probably didn't listen to the song till like when my mom passed. And I was looking for something to, you know, because I, I, I run to music when when I'm feeling down. That's what I do. Mm. Is either I'm, I'm listening to music or I'm making music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going through my archive of things that I've not finished yet. And I heard it. I was like, what? <laughs> it's a jam. Like, I totally forgot about this song, you know. I was like, oh, wow. So I had to finish it with everything that was going on. I was going to channel it to, you know, talking about what I was going through with my mom, with, you know, family, with, you know, different situations. But I was like, nah. You know, it can't spoil. Like, I, I know it, my mom taught me that no matter the situation, you got to keep moving, keep going. You get me? At the end of the day, success is the best revenge. So you just got to keep going. So that was the idea behind the song, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, that's, that's, that's something, man. Yeah. So, I, I mean, um, I, I, I think I told you that I was at the club and they played, they played it yeah. and the reception was even more than I imagined, you know? Yeah. That said, now, um, this is a delicate topic, but you know, just to touch on it, yeah. um, your mom's uh, passing. Yeah. But how did that happen? Um, honestly, my mom has been, you know, trying to recover from stroke for like the past um, five, six years. 
You get me? So it's been like a struggle. Like I've been hurt every time. Every time I see my mom, I want to. My I always, you know, shed tears. You get me? I feel, it feels so. I feel so bad because I know she worked super hard, you know, to make sure that we were good. And when when I felt when it's time for her to enjoy is when this is happening. So I always feel I felt bad, you know. And um, well, I went on tour. I traveled to the states. Um, I didn't see. I probably didn't see my mom for 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 like a month or two or so yeah. because I was on the road, mm -hmm. and you know, I just heard that oh she had a relapse again, and the next thing, you know, I made sure she was taken to the hospital. Next thing, doctor said oh it's like seventy thirty chance <laughs> that she may make it out of this, wow. and yeah yeah I remember I was in the plane when I got a. It was a voice note or a call. I can't remember that, oh, your mom has died. I was like, damn. I was in a flight, bro. I was going from Chicago to New York. I was like, wow. <laughs> I can't believe this thing. I, like, it was just unbelievable. And you, you know, had a show to perform? The, the next day in Mexico, bro. <laughs> bro. Did but I, go I had to, bro, I have to, I have to do what I got to do. But I mean, I, you know, it, it's our job. You got to be that guy out there. Because honestly, if anything fails, it's not nobody's going to remember you're going through something. <laughs> you get me? I feel like so, the, the, the yeah. world is now more emotional. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you had mentioned that, maybe mm -hmm. they would have accepted. I mean, I feel, of course it was mentioned to everybody, but I mean, a deal is a deal. I'm already there. So let me just finish it. You get me? And um, honestly, it was just a, it's been a crazy, I don't, I don't even know if I still feel guilty now, bro, because it's been a crazy journey from when I feel like my my life changed. After my mom passed, like I, the way I view life is different now. You get me? Like I don't well, see. What, what is it? What, what do you see now? Man, that we just we're just temporarily here. I feel like I was in a bubble of thinking I'm here. With we're gonna be here for a very long time, but no, I don't think we're gonna be here for a long time. You know, and um, just knowing that this life is is just is is not nothing is promised. You get me? You could be here to tomorrow. Boom, you're not here anymore. And you know, I, when I saw my mom's body. I was like, wow, I couldn't even believe it, man. Like, I, I don't even know. Like, I, like, I'm talking to you now. I don't know how to feel. I'm still like, wow. So this is real. You get me? I can't even believe it. I've not received calls from my mom yet. You get me? So, yeah, it's crazy. No, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Appreciate that. How about what? But didn't you, didn't you recently get married? Oh yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm I'm still a married man, man. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I yeah. listen. I mean, uh, but you got married when? Was it last year? Uh, twenty twenty one. It was twenty one. Mm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> how's how's married life? Man, is is like every other marriage. Man, it's just plenty ups and downs. There's, um, you know, plenty craziness. But most importantly, there's love. There's family and all. So. We, and, and I think marriage, you just have to agree to disagree with <laughs> me and all that. But at the end of the why, day... Why do, you, why do you think it's always like that? Because, uh, well, marriage is really a strong thing. Like, imagine you were raised in, by, like, a Kogi culture. And I'm raised by probably, like, um, let's go, like, Igbo culture. You know, and our families are separate worlds. The way the, your upbringing is different from mine. Mm. And now, because we fell in love... I mean, no homo. <laughs> I mean, but because we fell in love, the, yeah, yeah. Me and the, yeah. <laughs> we come, we come together, and you know it's gonna take time because now we have to start adjusting to all everything you know before. You have to, you know, it's either you compromise for the other person or so it's really a difficult thing because I feel like I feel like with my small experience, I don't know it all because I I still have a lot of people that still talk to me. As a matter of fact, Banky is one of them that still mm -hmm. advises me about how to go about things with marriage. You get me, mm -hmm. and women. You <laughs> get so, but um. You know, so it's, it's, it's really a tough thing. But honestly, what's most most important is the willingness, you know, and love. You get me? And you, you, you know what love is? Love is, am I happy? I mean, I'm like everybody. I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah, I guess I'm happy. You know, I love my family. I want to always think about my family. You get me? And I always want to, every time I walk, my family comes first. You get So definitely, man. No, I'm, I'm, I asked a question not yeah. for... It's just in recent times I've been hit mm -hmm. with too many um, unhappy male unhappiness in their marriages. Yeah. It has always been there, but now it seems to be getting worse. And then when it hits closer to home, mm -hmm. you know, you just really want to know more because yeah. I'm trying to really kick off advocating for men speaking up. Yeah, you know, 
if yeah. they're in whatever the situation is. Mm, I People mean, out here getting married for three months now, bro. Yeah, I, I, for our generation, honestly, what I would say because I also have married friends, and I have married friends that were raised in the old school style. I guess <laughs> so. They believe when we get into this marriage thing, we got to do it the so old the school style. Di- so uh, I've, difference? I, I believe for for what for marriage. No, I mean that one too, and even. Um, I would say upbringing too, how you were brought up. Then, but f- for, I just think part of the things that is causing a lot of marriage problems now, I'm just, this is my opinion. I'm not saying my opinion on be- based on what I'm understanding. Mm-hmm. I would say is the fact that I feel like this generation is exposed to so much information. No, I'll just, for lack of better words, I'll say so much information that we forget that when you get into marriage, it's not supposed to be smooth sailing, bro. It's a lot of rocks, bro. It's not possible, bro. Like I said, even twins have issues, bro. <laughs> like, bro. So imagine different people. If, even there's love, there's times where, for example, maybe, let's say, um, my woman now, she has OCD p- problems. <laughs> okay. And I'm that kind of guy that, oh boy, if you carry something from this place, you go see her for somewhere else, you get a kind of thing. Those are like some small, small things, but I'm just saying there's bigger things than that. You yeah. get, but it's just a little example I'm giving. So it takes a lot of sacrifice, you know, compromise. Like, okay, listen, me and you are together now. This is how we'll do this it thing. Has to work. Yeah, for it to work. So I just feel like this is our generation, not a lot of people is ready to put in that work to say, okay, yes, like we have to work on this. You get me? I mean, then again. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, be married counseling show. <laughs> Wait first. Now, um, <laughs> look, you've been in the music. I need to be right, but mm. you've been in the industry actively for I want to say twelve, twelve yeah. years or how long? Yeah, twelve, more than twelve or so. Twelve to fifteen. Yeah. Twelve to fifteen. Bro. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but yeah, twelve to fifteen between those ones. When was your first hit record? Man, I think t- different people have different. Opinions of my first hit record, but for me, yeah. I would say it was when I dropped Mukulu. No, but you had a record before Mukulu. Yeah, I had Heading for a Grammy. I had Heading for a Grammy. Yes. Damn, Heading for a Grammy was a hit record too. Heading for a Grammy, Take Care of Me, um, Baddest Boy with them, with Bank and Ways. Yeah. So, bro, I would say my f- originally my first hit record was from 2012. Got you. 2012. Which yeah. is over like, a decade. Yeah, like a, yeah, over a decade. Now, Within that time frame and Mm. now, Mm. I can attest to the fact that the industry has shifted in 60 billion dimensions, (laughs) to be honest, in terms of pace, in terms of um, 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 structure, Mm. rearrangements, digitization, um, what's that word now, tempo, Mm. fluctuating, you know, acceptance of all that, you know, hip hop and all of that stuff. Mm. How have you been able to stay afloat regardless? Because... Within that same period, popular artists don't come up coming. Mm. Now, the reality of Nigerian music. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, how have you been able to stay afloat regardless and still have the fan base that you still have? Yeah. Um, m- most importantly is, I would say, I have done that via, you know, learning, honestly. Learning, knowing that things change. You know what I mean? I have to learn what's new. And of course, the people like keep close to me are like people that you know they know what's next yeah, as a matter of fact they can, we predict things before they happen <laughs> mm-hmm. so we calculated we wait for it to happen but we've been ready and I have I have DJ friends I have industry business friends yeah. you know so all those things honestly has helped me and of course the music I'm already passion, passionate about it I'm, I'm experimental I believe I'm diverse I, I, I'm diverse <laughs> you get yeah. me I believe so for me that's the it's, what I've just done is just basically, you know, also, sorry, I'm just thinking about so many things. Also, yeah. like the collaborations, you know, I've tried my best to, there was, as, as a matter of fact, I believe I've collaborated with almost like 80% of this industry. <laughs> I had an album that, that was like a DJ album, like yeah. a DJ Khalid album, which is, uh, which album was that? I think it's Mr. Love or so. I had everybody you can imagine on the album. One Day Cool to Tenny to T. Watts, yes. uh, you know. So, um, honestly, that's like, I feel like that's the way. You have to find your way to just you know, tap into what's going on at the moment. Yeah, it's either, it's either you collaborate or you learn the sound or the new business pattern. And that's how you just stay. That's how I've been doing my own, you know. And of course, you know, um, at 
now we have social media, so I, I don't play with social media. I use social media a lot. Like as a matter of fact, now there's a new thing I do that a lot of people don't like me doing it. But if I like a song, I can just record my own version of a song and just put it on my Instagram. Yeah. And it, 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 for me, I believe it has been working because the people that know skills, that all that love skills from day one, when they see it, they're always happy because I give them that yeah. quote unquote day one skills. No, but yeah, that's how I've been trying to maintain myself. You, you don't seem to. You started off as a rapper. Yeah, I was a musician, but you know, the song that came out was a rap song. So I mean, your first like two records was hip hop. Was yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> it was hip hop bar for bar type of p. And you don't seem to, you don't seem to want to leave hip hop because even in Koniba, just on bars they said. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, if a rapper sings, you would always know because the lyric, the rhymes would always be different from when a normal singer. But for me, I am, I believe it, this generation or in our generation, I, I'm not, not to brag or anything. I believe I'm one of the greatest artists that can do everything. <laughs> you get me? I can, you can put me anywhere, I'll do it. You want a good one for you, you get me? Mm-hmm. You want anything that you want, I'll run it for you. But um, so what I've tried my best to do is even before like, you know, the whole um, you know, the whole idea of, oh, rap, rappers can sing their hooks. And I've been doing that. <laughs> I've been doing that from Kaduna <laughs> as a kid. I was, because I, I, I didn't have anybody to, um, I mean, you know how people look at champion staff, the form for you, no one sing hook for you. Yes. So me, I could just write my hook, sing my chorus, rap on. <laughs> people when they feel them. And it now happened that one of the songs that was only rap all through, was, was the person. one that everybody yeah. liked. You yeah. get me? So it worked. And um, they've been trying to put me in a box <laughs> from the beginning. But I, I believe I've tried my best to break out of the box. Yeah. So anybody that still wants skills rap, don't worry, you get it. But for now, like I'm just a diversified artist. I just find different ways, different styles to express myself just musically. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, let's go all the way back to your background. Mm. Um, growing up, at what point did you become skills, the artist, right? Uh, at what point did you sign to EME? But way before signing to EME now, growing mm. up, what social class would you say you've been in, uh, you grew up in? Um, are you one of them who was, oh, uh, you see, it's one meal a day and then I ran away from home. There's a lot mm. of artists with that type of story, mm. you know? What, who were you? Um, skills back then, who was born and raised in Kaduna State by my mom, Miss Martina. Which a lot of, I think a lot of people know and a lot of people still don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was born and raised in Kaduna State, but I'm not from Kaduna. I was just born and raised in Amanedo Boy. So, but anyways... Um, that's, a, that's such a weird mix. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people unlike, think... Unli- sorry, not weird. Unlikely yeah. mix. Yeah, I'm telling yes. you. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, was, my mom was a teacher. So um, my, my dad left me and my mom when I was like probably four or five or so. I was really young. Mm. I can't, I don't even know what my dad looks like. <laughs> you get me? I can only really remember, out. I can only really remember. reach out to now? Bro, I don't know if he tried to reach out, but I, I remember I tried to change my dad's name, like take his name out of my name. <laughs> my mom begged me to keep it because I told her, this is the new, new, this thing now. Yes. New movement. The new generation. <laughs> new yeah. generation. Yeah, new generation. I am going to, this, my legacy is what is going to be known. <laughs> you get not mm-hmm. my dad's own. Yeah, get boy. My mom begged me, but I mean, now I can take it off. You know, I, I love my mom though. But what I'm saying is, um, I was born and raised by my mom, single mother. She was a teacher. She was a jack of all trades. She used to do. I, I know this this story is very stereotypical, but I believe every Nigerian that has come from grass to grace has this kind of story. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, we're broke. Bro. <laughs> we were poor. I used to live in a small. This like some like what we have in here. So I know yes. the cameras can't see that, yes, but yes. like a booth, like we have a booth in here as a studio. So some, this booth was this big. So my mom used to rent like people's kitchen. She would sell from there and we'll also sleep there. I used to sleep under a sink. <laughs> this sink that they used to wash plate wow. with my mom. And um, yeah, it was a serious struggle. And really, for real, for real, music was my escape. And my mom also had like a CD cassette store. She used to sell bonds, sell akara, sell kunu, sell zubu. Wow. <laughs> Still go and teach in school just to, wow. you know, make things work. And um, yeah, she actually made me fall in love with music because, you know, like every other kid, every other kid had TV that they watch at home. I had nothing. Bro. <laughs> all I know is, all, what I used to do is just go to my neighbor's house and peep 
through their windows to watch yeah, Chinese movies. That time is Bruce Lee. That's true. Story. <laughs> true story. You know, and even went to play. They had game. All those Sega games that year. We'll still go and peep. They would pour us water. <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, um. Yeah, so it's my mom. The way they laugh at the deep, bro. Yes, bro. If I tell you, my life is a movie, bro. If I tell you my whole life story, bro, you would probably be like, what? And <laughs> you're smiling. But, anyways, as I was saying, yeah, so my mom introduced me to music. Um, How? She's, my mom also used to sell cassettes and CDs at the back of the church. Huh. You get, so, unlike every other, and she had a radio that she'll be playing. You know, you have, you have to advertise what you're yes. selling and stuff. Yes. So, I'm the one, I'm the DJ, I'm the one that used to always play the music. So, I used to play my favorite songs, you get me? And it was mostly gospel songs because my mom did not know I was going to turn out to be this kind of musician. You get? <laughs> There's a lot of things she doesn't know up to now. She still thinks my tattoos are fake, but I think she's not, my mom is smarter than that. You get me? She, she because, just allowed it. Yeah, she just locked up. Anyways, um, yeah, so I used to just listen to, unlike every other kid, I used to go watch cartoons and stuff. I was always listening to music. I started looking for ways to write music. I couldn't. So I met one of my guys. His name is Paul Rosa. You know, he started, he used to write songs for me and give me, he tell me, do it like this, do it like this. So you know how you keep practicing, practicing, then it becomes a part of you and stuff. So I don't fell in love with music. Then my, I remember my pastor's child at that time, his name is Daniel Ado, who, who, was, who is one of my best friends in the world. You know, he used to tell me to come to his house. He'll make beats on his keyboard. Put, give me this kit. I'll buy this kit. Or I'll steal this kit from school and bring it. <laughs> you can see. That time, like this kit, you know, he'll make beats for me. I'll, I'll go, or would put a mic to like a disc man. I'll record a song while the beat is playing. You record on top. <laughs> Some crazy, crazy stuff, bro. So, but anyways, yes, that's how I fell in love with music. I started winning competitions. You know, my mom did not realize the passion because I'll go to school. Sometimes I will not come back home. I'll come back late. She used to wonder what is going on in that school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she doesn't know after school, I used to go to do music. So later on, she found out because people were telling her, oh, your son is incredible. Like, he won this competition. And she was like, I was never telling her. I said I was scared because I didn't know whether she's going to. Because mm -hmm. her own was just go to school. <laughs> Can I get yes, it? Yes, yes, so, um, and I told her, hey, I want to move to Lagos because I see that times they had all those, I don't know if I can mention all the networks on TV. I used to show like Kenny's. Everybody mm -hmm. was inspired by Primetime Africa, bro. Yes. I used to watch and be like, wow, I'm going to be like these guys one day. I remember I used to even watch I, I watched Whiskey. That time he was signed to Banky already well, while I was in Kaduna. I thought you were both signed to Kaduna uh, no, around the same, the same period. No, Wiz was, huh. there. Wiz was there a year or two before I came. Interesting. Yeah. So anyways, um, so I, I, and I just begged my mom that I want to go there. So I remember I was in SS3 already. Then God now did it. She now said, eh, no problem. Finish secondary school. When you're entering uni, you can go to Lagos. So you can apply Lagos or anywhere. Um, I applied Lagos, they don't give me admission. <laughs> they don't give me admission, but J Joss gave me admission. So mm. I was like, hmm, if I go to Joss, I can be going to Lagos, she will not know. <laughs> Anyways, that thing happened because the admission took so long before all those, that, I can't remember, how, I think it was all those strikes too. So I was just home. So I begged her that I want to go to Lagos. Then she finally agreed because I told her she promised. So she finally agreed. She now said, who do I know in Lagos? I didn't know anybody. So I, I remember lying to, no, lying to my ride to Lagos. It was one of my friends. He was relocating from Kaduna to Lagos. So I told him, hey man, I need a ride. To, can I follow you? He was like, yeah, because he's driving alone. He needs somebody to have in the car with him. So I was like, okay. Um, can I come when you, he gave me the time? It was like 6, I think it was like 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning. He was leaving Kaduna to Lagos. So I went, my, my mom went with me. She escorted me. She prayed for me. He <laughs> prayed for me, gave me some small money. I can't remember how much, like two or three kilos to give me. I said, please, I should be careful. She not told my guy. My guy, too, I lied to him that I knew somebody. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Uh, bro, guess how old I was? Oh. I was 16 years old. Bro. 16? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I don't know. I honestly did not know what I was doing that time. I was just like, bad as he bad. Somebody could locate me. <laughs> because mm. I believe my talent was speaking. Anywhere I step into and I perform... You know, speaking. So anyways, we came to Lagos. Ah, this guy now said, I, we arrived Lagos. I remember that day in the night. It was His house was at Orile, Orile Igomu. Oh. So I remember that night. He was like, now tomorrow you did come out here. I said, yes. He said, ah, where the play, person plays there? I said, ah, I'm, I did call the person. You know, they pick. I was lying, bro. <laughs> I was lying. Bro, that's how we went. One day, two day, three day. The guy just said, you know, it's his. a music. He said, you want to do. Emo, they also do music. He me too. I want to do something with entertainment. So he started oh. taking me around. You know, meeting people. Who's this guy? His what name is TJ. Know? Oh, he works in he works with the government in Ilorin now. 
His name oh, is bro. TJ. We still, well, he's my guy, man. <laughs> so, anyways, you know, he because he likes me, he likes my music too. He was like, you know what? Let's hustle together. Stay in my house. I don't know if he got he, if he got the point that there was nobody nowhere. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> but anyway, so that's how I came to Lagos. Then I remember my first show was a uh, Kofi, the comedian Kofi. Yes. And um, I performed. When I performed for the first time, I was heading for a Grammy. Everybody was like, what? Who's this? Then I remember one other show. I can't remember who was the the um, the com- the MC. But yeah, we crashed the show. This is how I met my first manager in Lagos. So I wasn't invited for this. There's one of my crazy friends. I can't even remember his name. <laughs> He's from Orile. So you know, now Orile, now Ghetto. Yes, yes. So he just told me, come to Unilag. And I went to Unilag because I used to play my music for him. That time you see, oh boy. So I went to Unilag. As I went to Unilag, um, he said, you go perform that you're heading for a Grammy today. I said, yeah. He said, you hope you hold, and I used to hold my bag. I used to have a bag. Everybody knew me yes, as the boy. Yes, In actually. that bag, everything you can yes. imagine is there. Toothpaste, toothbrush, <laughs> CDs, empty CD. Because, bro, bro, I was ready. <laughs> and any time, I came to hustle. Anyways, as I reached there, this guy now told me that there's going to be, a, so he was friends with the DJ. He now told me there's going to be a space when the MC come out. Bro, I was not on the schedule. It's not even his show. He's just a madman. Bro. <laughs> he now said there's going to be a space that... It, they're going to play my CD. He's going to give the DJ my CD. DJ is this guy from Relay. See if you know play, I'm going to go come out now. <laughs> come out. He said, no worries, kids. Are you ready? I was like, so you know, they now started playing the song. The DJ now passed us the mic. As I just, as I just play, I just came out. I remember that he was in lag. Bro, as I was just rapping, everybody scattered. The MC came out to stop him. When they saw everybody going mad, but they just leave one. Then they stopped. They now said, I should perform it again. <laughs> bro. bro, that's how I met my manager. I remember it was a, it was an Ed Zane. Zane. It was um, it was like 2009, 2008. I remember it was Zane, Zane, a Zane show. So uh-huh. I met my manager, my first manager, his name is Novo. So I met him there. He just came and said, Give me your number. <laughs> I gave him. He said, Who's your manager? I said, I don't have one. It's like, I'll manage you from now. So he too now started plugging me, plugging me. Then he plugged me to this Sounds T event. I don't know if I can mention Sounds T. Right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So he plugged me to this where it finally happened. This all this happened in like a year, bro. Oh, <laughs> really? me? When I, that's you're what I'm saying. With your dad, I was your still guy. staying with my guy. So my guy now started, as a matter of fact, and I told him that he now started a record label. He said, Bro, that he needs artists. I said, yeah, sign me now. I said, because I needed where to stay, bro. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> I said, sign me. I said, I'll be your artist now. Bro. So he now said, okay. You know, we didn't do no paperwork or anything. Yeah. Just mouth signing. Then um, this is my new manager now. My first manager was taking me around. I was always performing. So the boss was, everybody was talking about this young kid that's always with a Way bag back, performing. Yeah. And all. then where it finally happened was he hooked me up with Sounds T. The, the Sounds T, they call it something music blast that year. So, and I think that time it was nice and debunched that with the hot text. Yes. So, um, they didn't even want me to perform that day. You know, big, big respect to Basket Mao. You know, I remember when I was growing up, but it's a joke now, so just in case. Yes. Basket Mao, Basket Mao was like, scales. What is scales? You know, I think I kind of felt bad. You get me? I felt bad, but I knew I, I was here to prove a point. <laughs> so, yeah. that didn't matter to me. So, I remember it started drizzling. When it started drizzling, I was like, oh my God. Because the crowd was like, Thousands of people. I don't know if it's thousands or hundreds, but there was many. It was Ocean View that year. Yes, Ocean View. That was part. Bro, I just got on stage like this. Then, because it was drizzling, I started performing. Then the lights just went off. Bro, I was like, damn. But I just continued. And I started shouting. Bro, I was doing, I was spitting the lines. People were like, what? They could And I was, you know, when you're younger, your voice is louder. Yes, bro. Exactly. Like, bro, I was going, Hello for a Grammy. The mic was off. Everybody was like, whoa. Everybody's hands now went, bro. I, if I was on stage and I had goosebumps, bro. Like, everybody went up like this, like this. Then the light now came back. The light came back. Then uh, I think Basketball now came up. He wanted to. Cut the cut, tell that. Oh, sorry about it. Let me call the next person. One more. They don't agree. We want, t- we want scales, bro. I was like, what, <laughs> bro? I, I cried on stage, bro, because bro, you don't understand. Like this boy just came from Canada. Yeah, yeah. I was like, damn. Then this time they not played the with the instrumental. Oh boy, everywhere scatter, <laughs> bro. Everywhere scatter. Even the headlining, uh, this thing. There be no get that kind of response. Where been they get? <laughs> So they were like, what? I remember all the, all, a lot of people, Now, I, when I got off stage, a lot of people came to me, you know, and that's how I 
got to meet them. Then I met Osage. Then Osage was there. I met Osage. I met Whiskey. And, you know, I just kept the relationship going. You know, big shout out to Terry Rapman also. Terry Rapman now bought me a session in Night House because I was trying to record a song, but I couldn't. So he he had, he had like, a, I think like an eight-hour session. He used four hours and gave me the remaining four hours. Mm. I met Osage. I met Whiskey. Then one night, I was just sleeping down my guy's house, you know, really. I got a text message that Banky wants to sign you. <laughs> yeah. From whom? Wait now. And I said, who is this? And that, okay, that, the reason why, so that my phone, I used to, I, I, I had a SIM. I didn't have a phone. So I used to use my guy's phone. I will just put my SIM inside and just on it to see what's going on. So that text message came in at that point in time in the night. I remember it was like, it was like 11.33 p.m., bro. Oh, so I was like, who's this? So I now called. And I showed my guy. He said, Banky wants to sign. He said, Banky W. And I said, oh. Okay, bank it up. I now called. I said, please, who is this? He said, Whiskey. I said, he said, who is now? Who is he from Night House? I said, oh, okay. He said, Banky wants to see you. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, boy. The next day, I don't... <sighs> my jeans, why did wear? Go hustle. I like, wear them, clean up. Make sure that I go fresh too now. Yes, Went to meet them, Banky. And, you know, the conversation started. And, you know, that's how my career started, bro. <laughs> my career started with them, Banky. And the rest is history. <laughs> 